Uh, However, the the ship that uh, John Kelly filmed, uh, the one that I saw, it looked different in the the way he filmed it. Apparently, when you see it with your own eyes, the lens changes things. But it was also pinkish orange. But the one you're, you're stating was on a Sunday, and I had left. But people at my hotel saw it, and they just couldn't believe it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's funny. It was on the – one came out on the 4th of July, and uh, – and we thought it was fireworks because they let fireworks off at the school over there at first. And we saw this huge uh, orange, reddish orange ball rise up in the sky. And and then it sat there for a while. And and then it, you know it didn't come back down. It just sat there. And then next thing you know, it traveled towards us and you know went right over our heads. And and uh, John Riley was out there and he filmed it. He got some really good footage of it. Um, Brooks Agnew was out there. He filmed it. I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, Renato Longato filmed, filmed it as well. But, you know, his famous saying, I got it, I got it. <laughs> you know, I got it, I got it, of course. <laughs> yeah, he goes, he goes, I got it, I got it. Again, I got it. Yeah. You know, so that was amazing. But, uh, uh, you know, with, with all everybody filming it and then coming out right after the intention experiment, that pretty much uh, is a slam dunk on the fact that UFOs are here and they are interacting with us. And, and you know, the redundant giving exact dates and times over and over again to, you know, Paranormal State and, and uh, BBC and, and ABC and Fox News and everything, and they got their footage as well. You know, I, I'm really spy- surprised that a lot of the UFO community just hasn't gotten over it yet, that, that it is ongoing and... and uh, you know, and it's amazing that they're not becoming a part of this because we do share everything with them. And this is the part that I don't understand. When you have people from all walks of life going going to East Side and to James Ranch and experiencing this, and if you've seen some of the videos that James have, have posted, it's not James sitting in a lounge chair by himself looking up. You can hear the, 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 the dozens of people around you saying, my God, look at that, power up, we love you, etc." So it's a, it's something that so many people see. At the same time, the skeptics, they will completely try to debunk no matter what you provide. And here's another example. Somebody sent me a picture of me and, and, and some in the group there. And I saw the picture and I saw this uh, strange thing coming out of my head. It looked like smoke or I, I, I don't know how to explain it. But then somebody else sent me another picture. I believe it was from a different camera. And the same thing can be seen around my head. It's not an orb. It's a, I, I cannot explain it. It's somebody called it an ectoplasmic. Uh, I'm not sure about the term, James, but do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's plasma. Uh, usually when you're being contacted or worked with, there's like a plasma field around you. Uh, the, last, the last class we did, uh, Yigong classes here with uh, Jenny Lam, and she's a uh, been doing martial arts all her life and we got together and we were doing some energy work together and and they took some photographs and I had this huge ball of plasma like right on my head where my head's supposed to be and uh, and then we had a heart shaped object you know right above it this beautiful red heart shaped you know looked like an orb but but you know three times bigger than most orbs it was it was amazing but you know, we get footage like that almost every day here. We just get crazy photographs. And here's the issue with me. You know, somebody who comes from, from, from the corporate world, things have to be black and white. It's almost as if these things were hitting me in the head with the bat and saying, how much more proof do you want that your reality is not the, the real reality? We've been living in an illusion. There's more knowledge and there's more reality for us. All we need to do is look. And you can doubt people, you can, you, can, you can doubt all you want, but you have to go, as everybody who listens to me know, I don't want to believe, I want to know. I took the trip to, to James Ranch. I was totally objective. I wanted to see if this was true or not. And believe me when I tell you that when I came back home, I was a different person. And I know a lot of people who were there share the same feeling, James. Yeah, we had some great footage you know, from that event. The, uh I think it's amazing a lot of these armchair investigators or, or scientists that, that, you know, throw stones from afar, uh, especially the physicists and the scientists, you know, the physics is there to explain this phenomenon if you apply it. And, you know, they can measure less than 1% of the universe that we live in. They know there's at least 11 dimensions out there. 
But at the same time, you know, they want you to give them physical proof of, of all of these non-physical events. But, you know, the video and the camera isn't enough. The eyewitnesses aren't enough. And, you know, they'll say, well, there was mass hypnosis. Well, I haven't been able to hypnotize my camera yet. I've tried, but it just keeps doing the same thing over and over again. You know, but... <laughs> And then they say you photoshopped it, but you know how do you photoshop something that had you know 200 witnesses present? And and then you have, right. Every, you know, yeah, yeah, filmed by Lockheed engineers and triple PhD Boeing engineers who were there and and uh, witnessed it and testified on coast to coast and other shows as well. So it just seems like no matter how much evidence, I mean, you could just put a mountain of evidence and bury them in it, and they would dig their way out of it and say, I didn't see anything. You know, it's what I always say, and, and when I started this show, my second show was called Obama, the Disclosure President. And yes, yes, those who are listening are probably laughing now, uh, but I, I've come to the realization that disclosure will not come from governments. Folks, stop waiting for the governments to disclose. It's going to come at a grassroots level, and this is exactly what happens at East SETI. You go there, and you see that this is real. You're not going to have any government admitting to this. Why? Because this has major repercussions, and I don't want to get into any conspiracy theory here, but it is true that oil rules the world. And if this technology, if we have it, and I, I, I have no way to prove that we do, at the same time I can't believe that we have the space shuttle as our, our, the epitome of, of our most advanced technology to travel to, to you know, outside of the planet. So. When you have the experiences that all of us have at James's Ranch and see the proof, it's either we all got together and photoshopped or believe that what we're telling you is the truth. Yeah, and I know this technology is out there because I've actually seen it and held it in my hand and stood right next to, uh, you know, Walter Rosenthal, which, was, which is a rocket man, you know, with NASA. And uh, right alongside him, and he was looking at it, took it apart, uh, had it run again, you know, incredible zero-point energy uh, technology and, and putting out massive in output, you know, no input, just massive output, and there's also counter-gravity as well. So it's out there. It does exist, and uh, a lot of people know about it. The problem is, as you said, is the oil rules the world, and if you bring in something out that's contradictory to that, you know, they either buy you off or you disappear, one or the other. And, and if people don't think that's happening and this is just conspiracy talk, I know firsthand because I experienced it firsthand, and I've lost some friends in that process. And there's people, We many of us have seen videos of people who are no longer with us. I remember a couple of years ago I saw an individual who had a, 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 a motor, a car motor that ran with water, and mm -hmm. he disappeared. So all these people are subverted or destroyed. Somebody comes and says, hey, look, we'll give you a million dollars. Let's let's keep the technology. I mean, let's say General Motors comes along and buys it. We know what they're going to use it for. They're going to put it, store it away somewhere, and nobody's going to see it's going to, It's never going to see the light of day. So we also have to consider what can we do to convince people, people like, like uh, 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 Rothenthal and uh, uh John Searle, who are coming forward with some certain things, to allow more people to come forward with, with this in a way that can go viral to the point that cannot be stopped. That's something that you and I have to talk about because it's, it's what we can do, James. Exactly. I think, you know, the, uh, uh, you know I, I have it on video. I have these motors running, and one is, is a motor for a flying car, and the other one was... Uh, a fuelless energy device for uh, a house, you know, would cover a house. And, you know, we videotaped these things running. We put loads on them. You know, we put, uh, uh, what do you call them, the uh, light sticks on them. We, we stuck uh, uh, stick after stick after stick, started plugging uh, big drills, heavy-duty drills, equipment into it, turned them on. Uh, you know, we had all these things running on this little tiny device you could hold in your hand, in the palm of your hand, and it, it didn't even phase it. It loved loads. You know, the more load you put on, it just kept, put, you know, chugging along. And, uh, you know, but uh, that had to be dismantled and, and to put in different places because the, the uh, inventor of it, you know, had his lab blown up and, and uh, family threatened, and, and uh, it was a real mess. And 
I was kind of involved in that whole mess as well. So, but uh, you know, it's sad because even a lot of the people in the in the fuel of energy community that you think are on our side are really not, and uh, they were around some of these problems that came up. And it's a sad state of affairs. All you have to do is go back a hundred and some years ago when most cities in in the United States had trains, uh, electric trains everywhere, and all of a sudden. Michelin and, and the tire companies came along, lobbied with the local government, and they eradicated most trains. And now you may find them in San Francisco and New Orleans every so often. But, uh, you know, this goes back in time. Once the oil started pouring in, there was no stop to it. You know, cures, we can talk about cures. We haven't seen one cure since the 50s when polio was discovered. And uh, the same thing now. I mean, what kind of uh, new technology do we come out? that they come out with. I mean, we still build 747s on new planes. It's ancient technology. The problem is that it is still profitable, profitable to manufacture. And uh, Dr. Paul Aviolette, who you may know, when he was yeah. on my show, he has written letters to, to NASA explaining how, and he had a system device, how to avoid the space shuttle from uh, being so hot on reentry to the atmosphere that it could cause an explosion. Well, less than a year after he did that, they didn't do anything, and the Columbia exploded. Uh, airlines, I have uh, a relative who's a high-ranking member of an airline, and he says that the profit margins are so, so thin. And if they could find a way to increase fuel consumption, that would be just uh, a, a paradigm shift. However, that is a subject that is not allowed to even talk about. So Dr. Laviolette approached the airlines, and once again, they said, we don't need it although they could be saving 70% fuel consumption and have their planes go cross-country in the United States, breaking the sound barrier and transporting goods and people in a flash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely technology out there that, that's counter-gravity that, you know, these planes would not fall out of the sky. You know, they it just wouldn't happen with these devices on them. So, uh, you know, it, there's just... There's so many things. I, I think about that. You know, they let people, you know, they sacrifice people on these space shuttles. They sacrifice people every day uh, in other projects, you know, and uh, airline crashes and things like that. And they just allow this to happen when none of it has to happen. And it, it just seems that human life is just so valueless now and, and expendable. And there's just a mass effort to make a lot of us go away. I mean, that's my conclusion, especially after looking at all the food additives and everything else that's going on and the GM, you know, the GMO corn and and other things that, you know, you can't even feed it to a rat because it kills it. Uh, you know, you look at this whole program, you go, boy, this is just an exercise in, in, in mass genocide. And, and, you know, this isn't conspiracy thinking. This is just logic, like looking at the facts and the consequences of these actions and, uh, you know, it's, it's just based common sense. Absolutely. And some of us who are lucky to find out when, let me give you an example. When I moved to Florida, I uh, was healthy, working out. I was about 22 years old, 23. And uh, I all of a sudden started developing this weakness. I, I, I was tired all the time, and I didn't know what it was. I got concerned. I thought I was developing MS. So I went to the doctor, and the first thing she asked me was, okay, so tell me what you eat and drink. And at the time, I was eating a lot of Chinese food. I love ch Chinese food. And, okay, so what else do you drink? And I was drinking a gallon, one of those big gallons of diet soda every day. And she said, you need to stop this now, otherwise you're going to die. So I said to myself, what, what? I love Chinese food and diet soda. So I stopped. Not even a week later, I felt like a new person. And it was the NutraSweet and the MSG, which are the two most prevalent things you see now. I used to chew gum because I don't drink and I don't smoke. So I used to chew gum every so often to keep my concentration. And all of a sudden, less than two years ago, every single gum manufacturing company has put NutraSweet. So even the gum, and you see children eating gum on a daily basis, and that is proven that gives you brain tumors, cancer, MS, and a lot of other maladies. So, yes, you have to be very, very careful when you look at, at – uh, uh, ingredients, even if it says, uh, let's say Splenda. Splenda comes from natural sugar. Not true. It has uh, chlorine, and it, it's derived from pesticides. Try to give it to a dog. Try to put it next to a to an ant hill, and if they don't eat it, you shouldn't either. 
You know, it's amazing the uh, the aspartame. You know, Rumsfeld had the patent on that, I guess, or pushed it through. But um, 